HyperSpark ready to run distributors are the easiest, most cost effective way to add plug and play ignition timing to any sniper or Holly EFI system. These ready to run distributors give your EFI system exact precise engine management. Follow along as we install our HyperSpark ready to run distributor onto our sniper equipped classic Mustang. Before we start pulling wires off, let's go ahead and disconnect the negative battery cable. Our Mustang has a Sniper EFI along with a points distributor. We'll start by removing the wires from both the positive and negative terminals of the coil. It's a good idea to wrap the terminals with some electrical tape to prevent arcing. Next, we'll need to find top dead center on the number one cylinder. There's a few ways of doing this, but the easiest way is by putting your finger in the spark plug hole while you rotate the crankshaft in the direction of engine rotation. To do this, you'll have to remove the spark plug wire as well as the spark plug in the number one cylinder. Then cover the spark plug hole with your finger and rotate the crankshaft in the direction of the engine rotation. You'll know you're on the compression stroke when you feel or hear the air being pushed out of the cylinder. At that point, you should be close to top dead center. Stop and check the timing mark at the balancer and then slowly rotate the engine until you're at zero degrees or top dead center. Now we can remove the vacuum line and spark plug wires. Before you remove the spark plug wires, make note of the firing order. On our Mustang, it's 1542637. Let's go ahead and pop off our distributor cap. Note the direction of our rotor position so we can match it up with our new HyperSpark ready to run distributor. Before removing the distributor, it's a good idea to use some compressed air or even a wire brush to remove debris around the distributor. Loosen and remove the distributor hold down, then lift the distributor upwards to remove it. Note the direction and rotation of the rotor as you lift the distributor out of the engine. This rotation is due to the helical cut gears and you'll need to take this into consideration when installing the new distributor. Let's get our ready to run distributor ready. Remove the distributor cap and liberally coat the gear with the included camshaft break-in lube. Our ready to run distributor comes with a cast iron distributor gear. Our Ford distributor has an O-ring, so just make sure to apply a small amount of oil to the O-ring to help prevent damaging it as we install the distributor. With the distributor cap removed, position the rotor so that when it drops down and meshes with the cam gear, it's in the same position as the rotor on the distributor we removed. If the rotor doesn't land in the desired position, lift the distributor up and back it up a tooth, then reinstall until you're satisfied with the rotor location. Also, make sure that your distributor is fully seated on the engine or intake. If it's not, on some engines, you may need to rotate the oil pump shaft to allow for proper alignment and oil priming tool or long screwdriver should do the trick. Next, we need to phase and align our ready to run distributor with the installation tool that came with our distributor. It's a clear distributor cap. You need to make sure that your cap matches the distributor rotation either clockwise or counterclockwise. This chart shows the different rotations of popular engines. Our Ford engine is counterclockwise rotation. Also note our number one cylinder marker. To phase our ready to run distributor, simply position the cap over the rotor, then rotate the base of the distributor housing until the cap drops down, locking it into place with the distributor base. Now we can reinstall and tighten down the distributor hold down clamp to finish the installation. Let's locate the number one cylinder indicator that I showed you earlier and make a mark with a Sharpie. This is our number one cylinder. We're ready to install the distributor cap. Our HyperSpark ready to run distributor features HEI terminals which may require new spark plug wires. We're using Excel Extreme 9000 ceramic boot spark plug wires for our Mustang, but any helically wound suppression type wire will work. Reinstall your number one spark plug as well as the spark plug wire, then attach the opposite end of the wire to the terminal right above the mark we made on the distributor base. Then install the rest of your plug wires according to the engine's firing order we wrote down earlier. Finish off by plugging in your coil. Now all we got to do is finish all our wiring connections that are done through the harness. The six pin connector plugs into our ready to run distributor. The following six wires will be connected. The purple mag plus connector goes to the matching connector on the seven pin connector on the sniper EFI main harness. The connectors are keyed. The purple wires should plug into each other. Next up is our black wire which is engine ground. We'll find a ground at our intake manifold. 
The white wire is our points output wire which attaches to our 10 pin connector from our sniper. The pink wire is a switch 12 volt ignition wire. Remember, this needs to be a clean switch 12 volt ignition source that must support 10 amps of load. Failure to provide 10 amps may result in blown fuses, no start conditions, and or ignition inefficiencies. The last two wires in our harness are for the ignition coil. While designed to plug and play with a hyperspark coil for maximum voltage output, we're using a sniper canister coil to keep things looking original, so we'll simply cut off the TFI connector from the harness and install a pair of ring terminals. Let's go ahead and terminate our harness for installation. All the terminals are included in the kit. Now let's go ahead and locate our 10 pin connector from the sniper. It's already been depopulated with just our points output wire left. We'll butt splice with the white wire from the ready to run harness. Next, we'll pull a manifold bolt for engine ground. Make sure there's no paint on this grounding point. And finally, we can plug in our switch 12 volt pink wire. This source must have 12 volts while cranking and with the key in the run position. Last but not least are the coil wires. The red wire gets connected to the positive side of the coil, while the orange wire will go to the negative side of the coil. These should be the only wires connected to your vehicle's coil once you've made all your connections. Finally, we can connect our 6-pin connector to our HyperSpark Ready to Run distributor. Make sure to route all the wires away from any heat sources and wrap them to protect them from any abrasion. Let's go ahead and connect our battery. With our HyperSpark Ready to Run distributor all installed and wired up, all we need to do is set up the parameters for timing control in our handheld. Anytime you're performing upgrades to the Sniper EFI system, you should always make sure that the firmware is up to date on the handheld as well as the ECU. To check, turn the key to the run position but do not start the engine. Select the files icon from the home screen, then the ECU HWFW. Minimum version to run the HyperSpark Ready to Run distributor is 1.3.50. We also need to check the handheld's firmware. Do this by selecting Local Setup, then Info. Minimum for the handheld is also 1.3.50. We can now go back to the home screen. If your firmware versions are not compatible, learn how to update the firmware on your Sniper EFI system by watching this video. Look for the link in the description below. Now if you're doing a new install, you'll select Wizards and follow the prompts. Once you get to the Ignition Type screen, make sure to select HyperSpark Distributor. Then press Next. For Type of Distributor, select the HyperSpark Ready to Run. Hit Next, then follow the Wizard prompts in the Sniper EFI handheld to complete the setup wizard. If yours is an existing install like our Mustang, then instead of rerunning the wizard, you can manually change your ignition type. From the home screen, select Tuning, System, Ignition Setup. Under Ignition Type, let's change it over to HyperSpark Distributor and hit Save. We'll get a prompt to make sure we cycle the ignition. Before we do that, let's make sure the reference angle is set to 57.5 and that an applicable engine main rev limiter is set. Inductive delay should be set to 100 microseconds. Let's cycle our ignition. Now we need to set our dwell to 4 milliseconds. Select Home, Tuning, Advanced, Advanced Ignition. Here we can set our output dwell to 4 milliseconds. Hit Save and we'll cycle the ignition one last time. All that's left to do is verify our timing. From the home screen, select the tuning icon, system icon, and then static timing. Set it to 15 degrees. This locks our timing at 15 degrees so we can go out with the timing light and double check it at the harmonic balancer. It's hard to see, but our timing indicator is right on the 15 degree mark. If your balancer doesn't have a 15 degree mark or any marks, you can use this equation to determine how far from top dead center your mark should be if the timing doesn't match up to the 15 degrees we set on the handheld. If your timing pointer doesn't line up to the 15 degree mark, you'll have to loosen the distributor hold down and rotate the base until it does. Now that we've verified timing out at the balancer, we need to clear the static timing setting that we set earlier on the handheld. 
If you'd like to custom tailor your timing curve instead of using the curve that's created by the wizard, you can download the Sniper EFI software which allows you to create a custom ignition timing curve for your engine. Now that we've finished our HyperSpark ready to run distributor installation, all that's left to do is to go out and enjoy our car. For more information on HyperSpark ignition systems, visit us at holly.com.